everybody. As you can probably tell, we're here to talk about Star Trek today. More specifically, the 50th anniversary of Star Trek. Where does that time go, eh? And we're we'll talking about fives. We're going to be talking about the five M's today. Memories, music, merchandise, magazines, and miscellaneous. First off, just some of my initial memories and thoughts. What instantly spring to mind when I think about Star Trek. Probably one of my very first memories of Star Trek was there used to be this shop in the main town centre where I lived named Thomas and they used to have all the things that didn't sell and normal, normal shops couldn't get rid of and I remember my mate Salty having some of the Star Trek figures from Star Trek the motion picture and usually when Thomas had this any stuff they couldn't get rid of like black hole stuff and things like that nearly me and all my friends had it because you know your parents used to buy toys from there and I think I had Scotty. I remember him having like a like white on his suit and the little black button on his um, on his stomach area. But I remember my mate Salty did some dead cool with his Spock figure. Was he got plasticine and it probably looked really naff now, but he made it look like a deep sea diver. I remember going there once he took the helmet off. And I say I'm probably completely roast into glasses, but he took the helmet off. I was like, oh my god, that's really, really amazing. I was like really astounded by it. But that's like by one of my very first initial memories of um, of Star Trek. And then this is here. Uh, I have to link everything to the Savoy as anybody who's watched more than two of these videos. So uh, cue the who the hell cares graphic. But one of uh, memory that again just is locked in there I think it might have been when I went to see Staying Alive I might be completely messing the year up here but in Savoy after you gone past the counter there was an owl shape where and they had all these posters that were leading from the screen to the doorway so you go past the, the till where you bought your ticket and queue up that's a, a second queue so much we love queuing in the UK so you queue up between the counter and the screen and the posters as they got close to the door with the ones coming soon but the one closest to the actual screen was the teaser poster for Star Trek 3 the one with um, an outline of Spock's face and I don't know if that subconsciously stuck in my head but Star Trek 3 because I've always had a bit of a sort of not love-hate relationship that's the phrase that springs to mind with Star Trek but I always felt like I wasn't worthy enough to be into Star Trek or I wasn't clever enough or I didn't have enough prior knowledge but like Dungeons and Dragons things like that but like I said if it was just seeing that poster at the Savoy for Star Trek 3 but again I've got this weird memory that sort of I remember watching Star Trek 3 on a Sunday afternoon and I'm pretty sure I was ill and that's why I identified so much with the young Spocks growing up and I was thinking about me dad coming up from the pub and all that kind of stuff but I really always loved Star Trek 3 and even now it's one of my favourite films apart from this one right here uh, also as well uh, it took a bit like a, a local memory but Brett Spiner who's famous for playing Data in Star Trek The Next Generation he was interviewed by a local radio station, Radio Stoke, and I remember posting on IMDb about it, and still to this day, I've always got this like kind of weird thing where I get embarrassed when I hear people being interviewed on the TV, especially if they're American or foreign celebrities, because they always seem to ask them about some really silly or stuff they won't understand, or, they, or they've got very little chance of understanding and when Brett Spine was being interviewed they were like oh did you watch Coronation Street last night it was a shame what happened to Sally Webster you're like oh don't ask him that and then oh have you had bangers and mash and all this is like oh no uh, but this is um and uh, this is something I can um I've got like um say we're not worthy to sort of Star Trek because I'm not a very well read person and again anybody who's watched more than one or two of these videos will understand but one thing I can like say really sort of credit to Leonard Nemo with this for is um, my love of autobiographies. Because I, I remember renting from the library I Am Spock purely because it was a science fiction related <laughs> item. And I remember just thinking, oh no wonder he was so against, you know, people telling him to do all this, uh, you know, and things like that and talking to him about Spock all the time. And now he's, and you know, they were talking about these theatre roles and how. Uh, intelligent to what and intelligent he was and all the stuff he'd done and things like that and so it was kind of interesting to see how he come to terms with it and things like that but that was a great book that i read and this just literally popped in there earlier on this afternoon i hadn't thought about this for years and years and years 
I was checking the showing times for Star Trek 13. Uh, and uh, I thought to myself, oh, remember when the ABC or the Canon, it was it was either the ABC or the Canon, I'm pretty sure it was the ABC, did a Star Trek marathon. And I remember not being confident enough to go to it, or maybe he wasn't quote unquote old enough. But they did three or four Star Trek films like Through the Night. And even though I've done that since, it like, you know, the Warner and things like that. It made me think, oh, I wonder how cool that would have been to go see a load of Star Trek films and things like that. Well, I thought that was kind of cool. And two other documentaries that, uh, well, not other documentaries, I've got two documentaries popped, yeah. But two documentaries that popped into my head was, uh, there's a 1997 one called Trekkers. And it's really, really good. It's like got like loads of different characters in there and things like that. Uh, but one person that sort of popped in there is that like distinct memory was this guy who got a cat named Bones. Like I was thinking after uh, McCoy and stuff. But that that character, uh, that character, that person was like you know a, a standout for me in that documentary. And there's another really great documentary I saw it on Channel Five. It was called How William Shatner Changed the World, and it was saying how like. Virtually every cool invention you can ever think of, like mobile phones and computers. They were talking to the people who have invented him, and they were all Star Trek fans. They were saying that, you know, they saw the communicators in Star Trek and it made him um, invent the mobile phone or invent some chipset to go in a computer and things like that. It was really, really cool. So, you know, if you can get all the documentaries, that was really good. And this is probably um, one of the geekiest things I've ever done in my entire life, which by my standards, you know, is quite good. But as you can see by this hilarious drawing of the Starship Enterprise there, this is a blank VHS tape. And when J.J. Abrams was doing the 2009 Star Trek, a teaser trailer was released and it said like, coming Christmas, and it showed you the Enterprise being built. It had samples from JFK on and stuff like that. Uh, but when they released it, it was pushed back. I, I tried to make sure that I'd got that teaser trailer just to prove to myself that it actually did come, it was to be released on Christmas Day. And so yeah, I've got the trailer for 2009's original release date on VHS. Star Trek Memories. This is the magazine section, it's supposed to be an M there. Should it be more like a that or more this I guess, well that's the, uh, the apt one. I've got some newspaper cuttings, but they're really, really stupid, and even by my standards, they're incredibly stupid. I might scan a couple and put them on the blog post if I ever get around to it, but different things like the sun and the news of the world, and it's like more embarrassing than somebody finding your porn collection that I don't own. But the things like from when the Premier League season started and saying who will cling on to the Premier League and all things like that, but the complete opposite end of the scale to that because this is one of my favourite print adverts of all time. It's an advert for Star Trek V, the Final Frontier PC game. And up until about a year ago, this advert always used to make me laugh because it used to be like, you know, there's Kirk saying, I thought you were supposed to be dead. And then Spock saying, I rebooted. And that used to always make me smile. And now I look at it, I think, because I've got a proper kick, kick in the nuts now because Lenny Nimoy's died. But Oh well, it was, it's a great bit of marketing and actual IBM screens, thank you very much. And you can tell this is where my Star Trek fandom fad was kicking in because uh, there's Khan uh, Empire cover there from Star, Entry, Star Trek Into Darkness. Bit of a spoiler there if you haven't seen it. I think the film's about three years old now, so you should have seen it by now. That's the classic Kirk and Spock Empire cover there. I think this is referencing another famous cover for him when William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy did the exact same thing. But yeah, just, you know, pretty cool though. And this, this cover's pretty badass. It's the old Empire Star Trek Into Darkness again. Look how it folds out, pretty cool. It's got all the cast and crew. JJ Abrams there, it's like taking centre stage. And even more badass, it looks like this is part of the same advert there. Fast and the Furious 6, so you've got like a double gatefold thing there, but that's the magazine section. Maybe this should be under A for Annex Skywalker or M for Miscellaneous. Bonus points if you know where that movie quote's from, ladies and gentlemen. This is just me random thoughts now about Star Trek 13 and general, like how I think the future of Star Trek's gonna be and things like that. But I really hope Star Trek Beyond does really, really well. And one of the main reasons is Simon Pegg. So I know Simon Pegg is one of the co-writers on this film. And I know he's he's had a few digs in the past at things like 
the phantom menace and things like that which you know he's totally in his, well within his right to do but I can't help but thinking if this film does really poorly I just would hate being in the position of writing a Star Trek film that just goes down the toilet all people go oh you did a bad thing you were very bad uh, so it's kind of like and he does seem like like local but you done good he just seems like the kind of guy that you would hang around with you would know and, you know watch Channel 5 late at night movies and things like that. He does just seem like a real person, him and Edgar Wright and Nick Frost and things like that. So I really hope it does good uh, for his sake. And one thing as well, I've been going to the cinema a bit more than I have been in the last, say, year or so. And I've been noticing Simon Pegg's been advertising at The View, uh, saying, uh, he's got a big beard and everything, saying like, uh, book now, advanced ticket sales for Star Trek Beyond and uh, book at the local view and things like that and because I've only seen these adverts at the view I'd love to know if he's done one for Cine World or The Odeon or the Savoy Cinema Chain all four of them uh, so I'd, I'd love to know if anybody can leave in the comments like if he has done those things and as well talk about how cool is this like you know, years ago like say when I caught Star Trek 3 on TV or you'd rent a video or buy a DVD or something like that you'd be like oh my god I can't believe it but can you believe Sky Television I think it's only for a week or something like that, but they've got a 24 hour a day Star Trek channel. So it's been Star Trek stuff all day. I've watched tons of Star Trek stuff the last couple of days. It's been great. I honestly think in the last couple of days, I don't think I've ever watched that much Star Trek. It's like, I never really got into it as a kid. And it, you know, it was like always, it was always there. It was always there and thereabouts on, on the peripheries. We said peripheries, but yeah. So it was like kind of cool having that there and that. But I was thinking as well, it's Star Trek Into Darkness, it's very similar to Wrath of Khan and you know, they brought Khan back and you know just how it plays out, how you know like it looks like Kirk's getting die at the end and things like that inside the Spock, so it's like an alternate universe Wrath of Khan. But one thing that really makes one go see Star Trek Beyond, will this play out like Search of Spock somehow? I don't know how they could do that necessarily, but I'd love it if it it's the same beats and it's got that same vibe to it. So again, I, I really want to make go see it again. And this is something I only really confirmed until recently. So it only took me seven years to confirm this. But R2-D2, and this was foreshadowing at its best, R2-D2 is in the 2009 Star Trek. So along with Simon Pegg and J.J. Abrams, it's uh, connected into that Star Wars universe. And talk about watching loads and loads of Star Trek, like say because of Sky and things like that, doing the Star Trek channel. But uh, the original series is on Netflix. So I've been watching tons and tons of episodes of that. There was one where it was almost like the thing where a, a, an alien could take different forms. And then there was this one where they dressed this dog up as like a creature and stuff like that. So it's really cool. And then another thing, I don't know if it's like they've updated the special effects. I'm, I know there's special editions and I'm sure they might be the uh, special edition ones and things like that. Uh, this is my illegal Romulan ale. Some people know, others need an explanation. I'll get back to these figures in a second. And one thing as well, and this is definitely cursed, but I hope it isn't. I hope they've done a 10 Cloverfield Lane styly, and I hope kept it completely secret, and I hope William Shatner makes a Captain Kirk cameo in, uh, in Star Trek Beyond. If he pops up after the credits, it'll be up there with the uh, the Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters 3 uh, post credit scene. <laughs> Music. I know this is says Star Wars right there, but don't uh, don't panic just yet. It says other space themes. This was the very first album I ever had, and I treasure it, and it's awesome. But this has got the theme from Star Trek by Alexander Courage and can you believe they still use it to this day in the brand new Star Trek films so this is way old this is kind of new and they still use the same theme tune this is a great in-between thing this is the firm Star Trek in across the universe only going forward because we can't find reverse uh, but one thing about this that always sticks in my head was I had a brilliant music teacher, Mr. Hitchin, and he used to let you play records. So I remember people took the Dirty Dancing soundtrack in and different things like that. But this always sticks on my head for one reason in particular. Well, two in fact. There was always rumours that it was actually something to do with Star Trek, like Lennon Nemo or whatever. I don't think it was. But 
I just brought this from Woolworths and I didn't particularly don't think I'd go to on the day of release or anything like that, but it always sticks on my head because somebody always said to me, somebody said to me, somebody said to me, how did you get records so quick and like, where, where do you get all these new records from? It's like, I go to Woolworths and buy them. So I don't know where, I don't know where, I don't know if they thought I was in the beers. Use it. I don't particularly like this word, but it fits in with the M philosophy of the video. Whatever that means, this is merchandise. Specifically, videos and DVDs and one cool Zach toy. May as well start with one of the best. This is Star Trek Generations. And this is one of the few times I can say this. It's one of the few VHS tapes that I've got that doesn't work. I thought it did actually snap, but it doesn't play. I don't know why, it, it just doesn't work. But look at that, I've got it recorded, but Star Trek Generations. Don't go anybody says, one of the best Star Trek films. Star Trek The Next Generation on DVD. This is one of my favourite episodes where Data is Sherlock Holmes and they're using the holodeck and everything like that. But Star Trek The Next Generation. Is Freak's one of the best characters? Probably. This is one film I saw at the Savoy and like I say I've got like sort of an overriding memory about this there. I just it was so bored when I went to see this film. It was like sort of, uh, you know, and now it's like literally one of my favourite Star Trek films. It's really, really cool. And as well though, I've got like a, a really bizarre memory because I only ever did this twice I think at the cinema. Ran round, one was Bambi and I remember running somewhere in Savoy. And I was running by the side of the screen, the first row between the seats and the screen. There's like a little bit of wood that sticks out. And I remember a guy just standing there. I think he was probably about 13, but he was like, may as well have been giant haystack or something like that. The Granddaddy Abbey Mall, Star Trek 3, directed by Lennon Nimoy. And one thing that always makes me laugh about this film, and it's like, it is just, it always really does tickle me when I think about it, is that Lennon Nimoy isn't in this for 95% of the film. It's called The Search for Spock, and he directed it, so it means he was behind the camera for every single scene, almost. This is such a misunderstood film. This is Star Trek The Motion Picture, directed by Robert Wise, and it's brilliant. And I've got my cinema tickets here from when I went to see the new Star Treks. So I have to scan them or something. Star Trek The Motion Picture is, what's funny, it's always the acid test of where a video was stopped playing. This is Star Trek Nemesis. I haven't seen this, so uh, yeah. Paul Ross says, brilliant, great battle scenes. Patrick Stewart is superb. He had lady boobs once. Look at me, I've got girl boobs. The cage. Can you believe this got referenced in the 2009 Star Trek? There's a character in there, and uh, before Captain Kirk. Who'd have thunk it? What's the price on that? 10.99. 10.99. With the 50th anniversary of Star Trek, this is 1991, 25th anniversary, VHS. When are they going to commemorate the 50th anniversary release them on USB? This is widescreen, original version, Star Trek, The Final Frontier. I was going to take the mech out of this being one of those rubbish American, normally American stuff's better than British stuff. But yeah, this is one of those cardboard boxes like Americans have. Star Trek 5. Over the last 30, 40 years, I've had some pretty cool toys over the years. And this is probably one of the best ones. This is the Transport Room toy from the 2009 Star Trek film. As soon as I saw this, I thought, you know, I, I thought I'd help it out and help it on its way, but this is such a great toy. I've seen people unbox like the 60s and 70s versions, and I sort of don't mind a piece of that action. And then thinking back to the memory of when Salty bought the motion picture figures and, you know, playing with them in his garden and that. And I normally don't like when people do this because I normally think it's dead pretentious and you know, let people get their own memories and stuff like that. But I wanted to recreate the memory for, for myself. And my little nephew, he was like about one or two at the time. And my parents were just moving from the house I'd lived in for 20 years. I thought, oh yeah, he's just going to the garden and you know, play Star Trek. So here it is, the Star Trek The Motion Picture. I don't I keep calling it? Well, I guess it's called The Motion Picture, right? Oh, it is according to the soundtrack, I mean, The Motion Picture soundtrack. But uh, you know, there's the transport room. It came with a Scotty figure that's absolutely nothing like Simon Peck, but never mind, eh? Yeah, you can sit there and uh, 
Look, I am Scotty. I don't think that's, that's probably offensive. I've just noticed there's a little bit missing to this, but never mind. There should be a little little plate there, but if I just stand the hood there, holsters come come off the holster. I've lost the phases as well. I must be uh, I must be slipping in my old age. There, that uh, that goes there, and you can energize the uh, transporter. And it should beam somewhere. I think it's in up in Cleveland or something. And you can bring him back again. So he's pretty cool, eh? Star Trek. 50th anniversary. See you in another 50. <laughs>